love that intro, free speech under attack. I wish it weren't, uh, I wish it were just hype. It's not hype, it's a reality every day in this country between the uh, CRTC, the CHRC, the CBSC, and other alphabet soup of regulatory agencies. Joining us now to help us navigate through these and talk about some good news afoot is Kathy Shadle, our diversity consultant, <laughs> human rights expert, and a wearer of a lot of t-shirts. Well, welcome to the show, first Thank of all. You. Now, whenever you come on the show, I like to follow my mom's advice and <laughs> look you in the That's eye. Right. My eyes are up here, <laughs> but I know you wear shirts with right. writing on them, so I'm going to look at your bosom now. Can I uh, say the word bosom? I, I, I don't know. First of all, yeah. is that a sexist word to say bosom? No, nope, go ahead. I, I'll look at your chest. That's okay. a more neutral word. It says free Martha. Right. It's a good thing. Now, you're always wearing shirts. What's right. with the shirts? Well, I'm cycling through my collection at this point in my appearances. I'm getting about four or five years ago in my collection. And she's been taking some heat, Martha Stewart, uh, because of her daughter's memoir that came out this week, uh, telling you that, surprise, Martha Stewart wasn't really that wonderful to live with and have as a mom. So I, I felt sorry for, I was looking for something to wear, I grabbed this, it's right one on. of my faves. I gotta look at your chest again just for a moment. It's okay. just, this is just for business reasons. Yeah, that I'm <laughs> that's right, okay, exactly, getting, um, there you go. <laughs> please don't, uh, you know. No uh, lawsuits, Yeah. Though. Okay, thank you very much. I, by the way, filed a sexual harassment lawsuit that's against right. myself for yeah. an act that happened when I was in the bathroom, <laughs> just right. by myself. I was that's just, right. uh, I was uh, staring at myself in the mirror. Unhealthy workplace environment. I was ogling that's myself, right. let's be very honest. Yeah. There was no touching involved. No. Nope. All right, listen, uh, I want to be serious for a moment because we have some serious good news, right. and it's two things. We have two uh, political parties that are trying to make free speech an issue, and I love this. Right. I think you should talk about it. Uh, they're doing it in various ways, and I want your views on that. The first is the, um, the uh, Wild Rose Party right. in Alberta. They're not the governing party, but they're... They, they could be, mm -hmm. and they rolled out a policy last week. I interviewed Rob Anderson mm -hmm. from that party. Let's look at two clips and I'd like your thoughts. Roll okay. the first clip, if you please, Megan. Listen, I was at your convention in Calgary a few months ago when you passed uh, a resolution, and, I, and I'm gonna read it to you. This is on Human Rights, I'm just gonna read it. It's just one sentence long. It's that uh, the Wild Rose members believe the government of Alberta should amend the Human Rights Act to quote, unequivocally protect the freedom of speech and freedom of the press and should disband the Alberta Human Rights Commission. I was really pleased to hear this, but Rob, I see your policy today mm -hmm. and I don't see any protections for freedom of speech. I don't see the repeal of Section 3 of the Human Rights Act that I was prosecuted under. How come? Well, I think you will see that, uh, Ezra, actually. The first point in the policy is to unequivocally, uses that exact language, unequivocally protect the free uh, speech of Albertans. And but I think that clearly means that under Section 3 of the Human Rights, uh, that needs to be, uh, frankly, either completely removed or uh, entirely reworded. You know, I call BS on them because if you've got a 15-page document and you nowhere say you're going to repeal the, the censorship provision, but you talk about other things for 15, 15 pages, yeah. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. What do you think? Am I being too tough on him? No. Some time between the convention and that moment, that got cut out. The, the stuff about the human rights commissions and, and hate speech got toned down a lot. And we've seen this with other parties. We've seen this all through Here in Ontario. history. Oh, Here in Ontario. I mean, totally. the, the deal that made Tim Hudak the party leader was that he would abolish these commissions. Mm -hmm. He's silent on it during the campaign. Yes, you see. And, and it, again, it goes back to even um, Stephen Harper before he was the leader of the Conservative Party, before he became uh, Prime Minister. He was quite adamant that um, the Human Rights Commissions and the hate speech laws were totalitarian, he calls them. Yeah. Now, that was about 15 years ago. And we can see that nothing has happened. So we'll talk yeah. in a minute about Stephen Harper and the federal scene. Right. I want to play one more clip from you mm -hmm. from Rob Anderson. He's that Wild Rose MLA from Alberta. He was talking to me last week about their proposals. Let's look at that clip and we'll talk about it in a minute. In our human rights provincial court process, if somebody is, uh, is, has clearly uh, advocated for violence against somebody, uh, then, then that too is a violation of our human rights uh, so, legislation. So you're going to hear, I think you're going to hear criminal matters in the human rights commission. You're saying that you will also hear the criminal promotion of hatred, uh, of hate speech. You're going to hear that criminal code provision in your human rights commissions. No, it just says that we have the same standards civilly as we do criminally. You can't when it, when it comes under under the uh, human rights uh, commission. If something, if somebody is promoting direct violence against an individual, that is not acceptable under our human rights legislation. It isn't today and it shouldn't be 
under our, uh, and it won't be under our amendments. You know, I'm a lawyer. I won't yeah. say I'm the Alan Dershowitz of Canada, but I've actually, <laughs> you know, read this Human Rights Code. It's got nothing to do with the criminal code. We already have cops. For, hundreds, for more than 100 years, we've had a criminal code. It, this is not about violence. And, and it really weirded me out that instead of saying we're for free speech, we're going to repeal the censorship section, like literally a one-sentence policy, they dance around everything else, and then they say they're going to hear criminal matters at a criminal standard. I, I don't think he gets it. No, I don't either. And I've written a whole book about this, and it still baffles me that... What's the name of that book? Oh, uh, The Tyranny of Nights. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we already have laws on the books, uh, criminal code laws, about inciting violence and... and yeah, uttering uttering death threats, ridiculous. things uttering like that. Uttering death threats. And the existence of this parallel uh, quasi-judicial... Uh, entity and all these extra added on laws that can be interpreted any way, shape, or form, it actually makes things worse. It doesn't yeah. make them better. Yeah. You know what? I mean, you need a one sentence policy exactly. on human rights commissions. Either abolish the whole right. thing or repeal the censorship provision. Speaking of which, there is some good news out of Ottawa on Friday. Brian Storseth, he's an MP, young guy, 33, I think, from Northern Alberta, introduced a private member's bill to do just that. Very, very simple language. Repeal Section 13. That's the federal right. censorship provision. I looked at the bill. It's very lean. It's very brief. And normally private members' bills means I'm putting out a press release and right. it'll never happen. But he's actually 15th in line out of hundreds. So, so it'll probably be voted on as soon as November. He told, uh, it'll be debated as soon as next month, he told me, and voted on before the end of the okay. year. Now, I, I, using my own lawyer's eyes, I think it's a legit provision. It doesn't shut down the whole Human Rights Commission, okay. but it takes out the censorship part. My question to you is, what does it mean that this was a private member backbench MP's bill rather than something brought in in the name of the government by the Justice Minister? Well, it just goes to show you it's the same thing. As soon as people start getting into power, this will not shock anyone, they start to back away a little bit. And I think the Conservatives know that uh, there's their base, people, well, maybe not quite like me, but their base has really been for free speech, and they've been pushing it. And that's why they they had that resolution at their convention. But there's something about getting into power. Either you open the files and see stuff you didn't know about before, which is understandable, or you just chicken out. Yeah. And uh, every party does it, which is why I don't have a lot of faith in the whole process as it is. Yeah. I think there's two ways you could look at it. One is the government doesn't want to be involved with this. If it fails, they want to say it was just a backbench thing. Mm -hmm. So it could be they want to distance themselves from it. The other way, and I'm going to be an optimist, is they want someone else to carry uh, the flag for it, but they'll all support it and we'll know on voting day. And in a way, it, I think that's what, they, what they're what they aiming for because otherwise this is going to be an embarrassment for them when this goes to vote. Right. So it, I actually want to take the optimistic like, point It's almost like he's the designated scapegoat and if yeah. it fails, then they can, everyone will forget about it. But if it succeeds, they can all take credit for it. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Kathy, I really appreciate Thanks. you coming on. This is, I'm actually quite excited okay. about Store Seth's bill, and I mm -hmm. think we should follow it. And it's up to us in the, in the community, in the media, to keep a spotlight of attention on it to make sure those cabinet ministers do the right thing. That's right. Just for business reasons, I'm going to look at your chest okay. one more time. Free Martha, it's a <laughs> good right. thing. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we'll see you on the show again okay, really thanks. soon. Hey, folks, don't.